<clears throat> Aloha. I am your host, Winston Welch, and I'm delighted that you are joining us again today for this exciting session of Out and About, where each, every other week, actually, we explore a variety of topics, organizations, and events with the people who fuel them in our city, state, country, and world. As a disclaimer, any views or opinions expressed by me are strictly my own and not connected with any organization. That said, today joining me in the studio is Dave Watase and also Carrie Watase of StopAllawaiProject.com. Dave is a property owner in Palolo Valley where the Army Corps of Engineers has designed a proposed detention basin on his property. Well, there's a lot of two, more to this, but today we're going to explore this topic from the point of view of stakeholders who've felt left out of the process, feel that the process has been flawed from the start, that proper laws to engage the public were not followed, and to point to alternatives that the group is proposing. So uh, there's going to be a lot more of this coming up. You just saw an article in the uh, advertiser on this earlier this week. So uh, with that, I'd like to welcome you to my show, and thanks for being here. Thanks for having us. Well, thank you, Winston. I know you. So you are the people that are standing up. You know, I always say when someone points and says someone should do something about that or they should do something about that, you are the someone and you are the they that are doing something about it. So congratulations, first of all, on just stepping up. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a big deal. And so before we even start, I do want to point people to the website, which is stopalawaiproject.com altogether. Is that yes. correct? Okay, and I hear you have had a major part in creating that website. It is very user friendly. Looks oh. great. Are you? Thank you. We're still working on it. It's still adding oh. information. Yeah, well, a website never finishes, <laughs> I think. So you've got some great information on there for people to at least get a grasp of what we're going to talk about because we won't have enough time to, yeah. uh, to talk about this today. Um, one of the things that you have on there is the the EIS, which is the Environmental Impact uh, Study, and the, the final one, which is was prepared by the Army Corps of Engineers, that was pulled down from their website, but fortunately you grabbed it and put it on the website. So tell us about that, Dave. Uh, <laughs> what are we looking at here, and, and what, what is this proposal? Yeah, well, Winston, the, the Alawai Canal project is a flood mitigation project. It's a $345 million project that the Army Corps uh, you know, finalized, and they submitted it to Congress for funding. So right now, the state of Hawaii is looking at funding their portion, which is $125 million. And it's not a proposed project. If nobody stands up and tries to slow it down, uh, it, I think it will be built. So it's a done deal at this point, as long as the dough is appropriated from our state government. I, you know, I'm, I'm not a politician. This is the first time I'm getting involved in it, and um, I'm scared. Why did you get involved? Well, three years ago, um, two weeks before the last chance to, be, to give public comment, I received a letter in the mail uh, with a, the Waimao Detention Basin, basically all the engineering design done on my property. And they basically recommended for me to speak out, and I had two weeks to figure it out. Oh, two weeks is not a lot of time when you are confronting a uh, very large engineering document. I'm imagining that it was several hundred pages long at a minimum. Yeah, in fact, um, you know, when I went to the website, my, my, my computer wouldn't scroll down on the PDF. It was so big mm -hmm. Yeah, and that I had to download it. And luckily I did that because uh, almost two weeks after the last chance to, be, to give public comment, they shut the website down. Yeah, that's, that's actually a very troubling aspect of this. Is that this is a public project and we're going to be spending money or it's just anything to do with the public. These things should be up, made available, because when they take it down, it's just something to hide, right? It's just like mm -hmm. feeling like it's like a thing in the middle of the night. That's how it yeah. feels to me. I don't know. You're a millennial. How, what does it feel like to you? <laughs> um, it was very difficult to understand just because they were multiple PDFs, and I'd say they ranged anywhere between 700 to 1,000 pages long. Wow. Okay. It took minutes to download, and it's just um, engineering, architecture, designs, and charts. So I have a marketing background, and just scrolling through it quickly, I was thinking what government official who had approval, who had to look over it and say, this is fine, would understand it and actually read through the thousands the of pages. The thousand pages. Yeah. And I think the thing, the, the, the idea behind this is that this is the U U.S. Corps of Engineers, which has the 
obligation to it's a dual mission uh, actually controlled by president and the congress at the which rare branch like that but to protect our waterways and so people are naturally i think inclined to err on the side of conservative um it's like a banker right you know you yeah. want we want to protect things especially with this sure. like the crazy flooding we had last year in you know east honolulu but mm -hmm. this project has some serious issues and i think Maybe to start with, if we could look at the first slide and show just the scale of what we're looking at for the project here. Um, so walk us through this. Yeah, there's, um, this project includes uh, several detention basins in the valleys. Uh, Palolo has two, Manoa has three. Kanawai Park um, is to be turned into a detention basin, and Makiki has one. Uh, on the lower end, they're proposing to turn the Alawai Golf Course into a detention basin. And um, the Huston Ditch, uh, Alawai Park, and to build a four-foot solid reinforced concrete wall around the Alawai Canal. Now, the detention basins only fill up when the storm of a certain magnitude, uh, you know, um, overflows. Mm -hmm. So it basically holds the water back to allow the Alawai Canal to drain, so it doesn't overflow into the, the hotels. Okay, and so uh, the uh, egg headset might say, what's wrong with that, Dave Watase? Why do you want the hotels to get <clears throat> flooded? Well, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not against more storm protection, mm -hmm. uh, but this project is based upon protecting Waikiki from the 100-year storm. Okay. And um, I kind of dispute that. I also dispute the process that they follow because they need to engage the public. Uh, I don't think they followed NEPA and HEPA. And what is NEPA and HEPA? Uh, the National Environmental Policy Act and, and the Hawaii National Policy Act. And what do those stipulate? Well, it, re it requires the government to engage the public mm -hmm. for comment uh, so that they can hear our concerns um, and to evaluate different alternatives. Now, you said you got a letter two weeks before, three years ago. I sit on the neighborhood board. I haven't heard anything about it in in years uh, if, uh, since I've been down there. So this is something where I don't really feel like, we have, like I've gotten sufficient information on it. How about the, your neighbors? And do, were they surprised by this? Do they, did they know about it and thought, oh, they're never gonna do it? Or did they really care? Or did they know at all? Or Well, I, I think some of them were informed. I mean, I was informed, but I was given very short notice. Uh, the Army Corps told me, well, you know, this project has been going on for 20 years and hasn't been built yet, you know? and you know, I, I wasn't sure if it was going to actually become a reality. Mm -hmm. uh, I put my name on the website. You know, I mean, they had a sign up, you know, so I said, an email sign up that if anything happens, they're supposed to notify me and get me involved. What's the, what's the rush right now for the Army to build this thing? If it's been on for 20 years, why, why now? Because I think the money's there. Congress and, approved it. And it seemed like this was like a hundred million dollars or 75 million dollars so many years ago five years ago or something like that how did it suddenly oh yeah balloon? um and that to me should be a red flag to our politicians is that in the draft eis stage um the project was about 180 million dollar project okay and they projected the estimated property damage at 318 million and uh, behind closed doors without public oversight they finalized the eis and it soared up to a $345 million project and uh, projected $1.14 billion of property damage. Oh, so I, I, so I, I don't know how it, it, you know, it grew so big so fast. So uh, one, the real cost is actually more like one projected cost of $1.7, $1.8 million, billion, not three hundred. dollars Well, that's the pro uh, pro projected benefit. A oh, benefit, yeah, okay. The benefit is what the project will protect. Okay, theoretically, it's going to protect. Yeah. But as we, if we look at the train, what was the train originally going to be? Three, three billion, and now uh, it's like, eight yeah, or 2. ten. 8, or yeah. Someone said it's going to be twenty yeah. by all said and done. Let's mm -hmm. look at the next slide and see here why you say this model is flawed. Because we have a quote here from the the Army Corps of Engineers: "It will absolutely happen. It's just a matter of time." So this is the one hundred year flood model. Tell us about this and why you it. You, what are we really looking at here? What do you think we're looking at here? Well, um, I, it, this is like a 3D model. Uh, this is what they call the 100-year storm. And I think it's uh, a scare tactic 
I mean, if you look at it, right, I mean, uh, University of Hawaii is underwater, uh, you know, Iolani School, uh, all like golf course, Kapahulu, uh, Waikiki is all flooded out. Uh, the thing is, this storm is supposed to occur once every 100 years. Mm -hmm. And um, the Alawai Canal started 100 years ago, and we've never had a flood that big. Well, and that's, that's, it's a good point, which brings us to the next slide, which is another model that they had projected on. So we have here, and what is this one, Carrie, that we're looking at? So this is the projected um, flood of the five-year flood. So it's supposed to happen every five years, and um, a lot of Honolulu is flooded and underwater. Um, I'm 26 years old, so I should have seen about five of these storms, but I haven't seen any. <laughs> oh, actually, well, we, yeah, we should have seen, tw let's see, five, uh, yeah, 20 right? of these, right? Yeah, we yeah. should have seen 20 of these in the last hundred years. Mm -hmm. And I don't remember anything like that in the last, well, while, so even the last 25 or 30 years. But you're looking at a large area being flooded every five years. So okay. your, base, your contention here is that this modeling is flawed just based I, on I their... I think it's exaggerated, yeah. Exaggerated, okay. And, you know, sea level concern, storm surges flooding, climate change. These are real issues that are coming down the pike. So how do we deal with this? How do we make sense of this, of this information when we're given something by the Corps of Engineers who we trust to make professional, logical, sane decisions based on protecting the public, but these models that they're using, maybe they're projecting out in the future and imagining what might be, which I could understand, but yeah. if we might, should have seen something like this happen in the past. Yeah, well, um if you read the EIS, um, you know, the models are based on historic data and past storms that have hit the islands. So the Awa Canal is basically over top two or three times, uh, twice in, 19, in the 1960s. And the most damage that they've had is, on record, is $10,000. Okay. So I'm thinking one of those storms was probably the 100-year storm. Okay. Well, uh, and, and it's, I think it goes to show that our, our world is changing. And so there, I, I appreciate the attempt of, of, the, of the Corps of Engineers to address this issue, but my, the main troubling concern I have is the lack of public input and notification of the neighborhood boards and our elected officials. And I see you've, you've gotten letters from a lot of different people here that are concerned about this. Um, I think our, our next slide um, addresses that one, which was from Iolani School. Uh, what did they say? Well, Iolani, um, their concern was uh, they weren't being protected by the alternative measure that was selected. Okay. And, and, and not, only, not only Iolani, but, you know, there's a lot of other areas that were uh, kind of sacrificed. But uh, this slide right here is a comparison of the 10-year model and the 100-year model. And if you really look at it, there's not much difference. Well, so again, the 10-year flood should have happened every 10 years. I've never seen one like that. I think if it, if we ever had a flood like that, you know, half of Waikiki would be underwater. Uh, we'd be screaming it was the mother of all storms. And I think it's going to happen anyway, but the, the part that concerns me is that where Iolani School stating lacks that the this uh, EIS lacks scientific integrity and should be rejected. In this case, it's clear the scientific analysis, modeling, and methodology are flawed and cannot be relied upon. Now, obviously, mm -hmm. sixth grade students didn't come with this, up with this at Iolani School, yeah. although I'm sure they probably could give a coherent response, but they hired engineers to give a, a response like that. So Iolani School is saying, uh, let's not go so fast here. You have other letters from Ann Kobayashi, who represents the district, saying public really hasn't had an adequate chance to weigh in on this. What other outreach have you had where you found that the public really doesn't know what's going on? Well, again, neighborhood boards. Um, I think Manoa Neighborhood Board, you know, they voted um, for a resolution. Yes. And they did it actually very quickly. They even drafted the resolution uh, for me. You know, they took that initiative. And I think it's because they understood that um, they weren't engaged either. And what, is, what was the, res the gist of the resolution? Well, the resolution basically, um, you know, is asking the Army Corps to stop, you know, so that they can be engaged and informed about the project. 
and it also is asking the state legislature you know not to fund their portion of it again to give the public time to be informed about the impacts of the, of the project. Well, I think it's really significant that it's happening, and this is going to affect about seven or eight neighborhood boards, I think, and you're going to be going yeah. to all of them, hopefully. <clears throat> but when Manoa, which uh, arguably stands to uh, have a lot of damage from something like this, Moyaliili more, so we'll be looking out Moyaliili for this too, uh, when they're saying we need, to take a, we need to take a breather on this, and was it a unanimous vote? to ask them to do that or were there some extensions or both? you know i i think there were some people that you know want flood protection yeah but i think when they understood that it was a matter of a process yeah um we didn't hear any Objection. proponents you oh, know okay. for you know for the project okay so at, at this point the neighborhood board is just saying let's take a breather let's look at this thing again it's not that they're necessarily against it it's just that the process is really critical here and getting that down and i think that that's that's the most troubling aspect for me I, I, i'm for mm -hmm. protecting waikiki right i'm yeah. for getting more federal money for our islands yeah you know but there's a process nobody wants to see flooding or damage but we're just questioning the process and seeing is this the best thing and are there other alternatives that might take place here so right. a lot of uh really salient points here we're gonna take a little break here um, i'm talking with Dave Watase and Carrie Watase of StopAllawaiProject.com. And you can go there now during the break and look out for some more information there. And we will be back in a minute more on Out and About of the Think Tech Live streaming network series. Aloha and mabuhai. My name is Emmy Ortega Anderson, inviting you to join us every Tuesday here on Pinoy Power Hawaii with Think Tech Hawaii. We come to your home at 12 noon every Tuesday. We invite you to uh, listen, watch uh, for our mission of empowerment. We aim to enrich, enlighten, educate, entertain, and we hope to empower. Again, maraming salamat po, mabuhay, and aloha. Hello, I'm Dave Stevens, host of the Cyber Underground. This is where we discuss everything that relates to computers that's just kind of scare you out of your mind. So come join us every week here on thinktechhawaii.com, 1 p.m. on Friday afternoons. And then you can go see all our episodes on YouTube. Just look up the Cyber Underground on YouTube. All our shows will show up and please follow us. We're always giving you current, relevant information to protect you, keeping you safe. Aloha. Aloha, we're back, we're live. I'm Winston Welch and this is Out and About on the Think Tech Live Streaming Network series, talking about the proposed Alawai Canal Flood Control Project with Dave Watase and Carrie Watase of StopAlawaiProject.com. Uh, before the break, we were talking about the scale of this project. And again, thank you for being here um, as, we'll call you citizen, citizen activist. <laughs> so, you know, standing up for, and just saying, mm, I'm not so sure about this. and. Uh, thank you for doing that. Um, it's meaningful and valuable for everybody who yeah. <laughs> has anything to question about the, you know, how, what our leaders are doing. All public officials need input and to be held accountable to this. And it's very easy, like you said, a thousand page document. How easy was it for anyone to read through that? It probably <laughs> took, um, you're an engineering by, by, by profession. By school, yeah, okay. schooling. By schooling, and it probably took you a while to read it, and there was probably contradictory information in there or things in there that made you say, wait a minute, this this says right here, it's not gonna protect this area or that area. So can you address any of those things? Yeah, um, you know, the focus was on protecting Waikiki. Okay. But, you know, and, and that's what they tell everybody. But if you really look into the EIS and dig into it, and we encourage everybody to do that, um, the areas mark of the canal actually get flooded. And really, they, really? Moilili, um, Kap uh, Kapiolani side, Kapuhulu, um, it's all designed to flood and they're sacrificed to protect Waikiki. And part of it is, is how they designed it. Whenever you raise the, uh, they want to put a four foot wall above ground level, you know, along the Alwai Canal, mm -hmm. our storm drainage system works on gravity flow. So the Eros Malka, 
if if the canal is raised, it, it can't flow above ground. Yeah. So they're basically forced to flood. And if, if and if it's a high tide as well, then probably a lot of that's going to not be mitigated anyway. Yeah. Uh, and they yeah. have they considered things like installing very large jets or something that would that would pump the water out or that might go out. You yeah. know. Well, what what I propose I proposed like a whole handful of alternatives three years ago. Okay. In my response, you know, to them proposing to put a detention basin on my property. Uh, one of them was to put a floodgate at the Almoana Boulevard Bridge mm -hmm. and put flood pumps, similar to what they do in New, New Orleans. Okay. And, well, yeah, we know it happened in New Orleans that one of the dikes yeah. broke and yeah. that was it. The water yeah. just flooded in catastrophically. And so this model is actually predicting that that would happen without the dam breaking, essentially, that it would... In, in the scenario, if they build it, it's still going to flood Kaka'ako, maybe Kaka'ako, definitely Mo'ili'ili, um, mm. Kapahulu. So I think we need to be aware of that. So you encourage people to go there, dig in there. Yeah, and, and the thing, too, is to make it work, our existing system will be capped. They have these mechanical caps that cover the storm drainage mm -hmm. uh, as the Alawai Canal fills up above, above ground level. Well, I, I can see this as just one part of a massive sort of way that we have to look at everything with climate change coming because Waikiki, you know, the water already at King Tides last year, I went down to Fort Derussi, the ocean was as smooth as glass, but the water was already coming over the sidewalk right there. Mm -hmm. So I'm just imagining where they, we're either going to have to do some sort of Venice or managed retreat where we decide the city's just going to have to come back this way or maybe Waikiki becomes its own little mm -hmm. island at like you know, with some mm -hmm. dikes like Holland, and and I don't know. I mean, uh, this is a bigger question, and this seems like phase one of mass concrete and pumping. And uh, you know, as when the when the pumps went out ten years ago, was it? And the raw sewage being poured into Waikiki. I think we really need to look at these alternatives. <coughs> and, and, yeah. and yeah, and find the best solution find for everybody. Find the best solution mm -hmm. for Not everybody. Just Waikiki. Yeah, and you had. The little kids coming in from Hokulani Elementary School at the yeah. Manoa Valley meeting. What was that like, <laughs> having little kids there? <laughs> um, they were very persuasive. <laughs> yes. <laughs> little kids, that you, because they were emotional and, and lively and, yeah. and showed up for something. Oh, nobody wanted to disappoint them. No one wanted to disappoint them. Yeah, and uh, I don't want to disappoint our taxpayers. And I think probably the Corps of Engineers doesn't want to dis disappoint um, the citizens either. So... They may be under some constraints and deadlines that we're not aware of, where they've, they felt a certain pressure to get this through so that they got funding while it was still available, because I know how, how funding cycles are sometimes. So at this point, what should people be doing? They should be going to your website, educating themselves on the project, uh, finding out what points they may or may not agree with. You're going to be showing up at a lot of neighborhood board meetings, and are those going to be on the website as well, <laughs> where yes. you're visiting? Okay, and, and, and citizens can come down and say, I, you know, we support a resolution saying... Let's just look at this, like a similar one to the one that, that Manoa passed. And is mm -hmm. that resolution on your website, too, that people can reference? Yes. Okay, perfect. That one's on the same page as events. So events has all the neighborhood board meetings. <coughs> okay, and this is obviously not going to go anywhere too fast, but there might be some, I'm guessing, appropriations bills in the Senate and the House right now so that you might say, let's hold off on this. Let's just say that this year we said we're going to hold off while we engage the community. Is that federal money going to go bye-bye or will it, is it, is it there when we want to use it? Or do you know? I, I have no idea. Okay. I'm hoping, you know, we can save it. Yeah. Well, I can put it to good use. Yeah. I, cause we don't, uh, obviously nobody wants flooding and we got to do some preparations, but I remember when they were talking about that flood that happened, oh, when it rained for 40 days, 10 years ago or 12 years ago the blockage at was it woodlawn bridge it wasn't being maintained properly there i mean right now you can go and you can see these giant sand <laughs> islands that that if, if water really comes down and a tree comes down the same thing's going to happen again yeah so i don't know that these have been addressed either in the in the eis um at the neighborhood board meeting in Manoa, a lot of the residents expressed their concerns with the maintenance of all these new structures that mm -hmm. were going to be built. Yes. And so they basically said, well, we haven't really seen the government maintain the ones that we already have. What's the, how can we trust that they're going to maintain these new ones so that in the case of a flood, it's not going to be usable or helpful because they haven't maintained it. 
So really, really important point. So let's build something else while we have something broken and unfixed um, already, right? Like, yeah. like the backlog of how many hundreds of millions at UH and then planning a new building. I, I don't really get that. So yeah. if we could just quickly look at the rest of the slides here and get an idea of what uh, some of the, the models are going to look like. Maybe the one after <coughs> this one. Um, uh, let's see. We're looking at maybe the next slide from there. Um, so here is what uh, maintenance and dredging for a Manoa, um, it's like a, an example that uh, it's be a few feet high. Upstream detention basins are substantially larger. This is a smaller one. Yeah, what, what this is, is um, it's actually uh, in the EIS on the environmental side. So what the Army Corps is doing here is they're giving the public uh, advance notice and warning of what what could happen so they have a picture of every stream in there there's a beautiful picture like this one is Manoa stream yeah and then they have a picture of examples of the maintenance of dredging so this is just a little you know four or five foot detention basin the ones they're proposing are you know over 30 feet tall okay and if you look at this detention basin the silt the build up uh, it, it's not maintained, and they have a, like several pictures like this. In, to, in the EIS? In the EIS, warning. You know, like, don't come back to us and tell, tell you that, tell us later that we didn't give you warning. Yeah, because if a tree yeah. is on that one, you see that. And for the next, for the next ones, if we could just quickly look at those other mm -hmm. ones, we've got another one here of the, of the woodlawn, woodlawn detention basin and then one after that so it's just designed to kind of slow down the water there but uh, yeah, and this will only fill up like I said it has, a, it has a restrictor so maybe it allows the two-year storm to go through anything above that will start to with withhold okay. the water now the, all these homes around it you know nobody knows about it so uh, one of the residents who did testify uh, his house is like right in front of the detention basin. Oh, and there's, so there's a lot of people out there that they, they probably don't need to know this yeah. exists out there. Right. So that is probably the main, uh, one yeah. of the main focuses that you have is that um, it may not be the right thing to do, but in, uh, as far as engineering wise, but if in any event, we just haven't had sufficient time as citizens to be engaged in the process. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. this is your chance to get engaged people. Uh, I will strongly encourage you to go to your website, which is stopalawiproject.com. And uh, like I said, a great design website, easy to go through. Hard thing is going to be going through the thousand page EIS. But if you want to be informed, <laughs> you're going to have to go through what they have to say. You also have letters on there like from Iolani School, um, from Hokulani, from, uh, from Ann Kobayashi and other people, as well as maybe uh, some more information about how they can get involved. And unfortunately, right. as we know, time is always short and it is short today. So I would like to ask you to come back in a while and give us an update on where we're at in this whole project, um, if you would be so kind to do yeah, so. Yeah, sure. that'd be great. <laughs> um, and unfortunately, we are out of time. So it has been my great pleasure today to be talking with Dave Watase and Carrie Watase of uh, StopAllTheWayProject.com. Thanks again to both of you, and viewers can visit your website for more information. We welcome your feedback, uh, and for tuning in, thank you as well. We always give a shout out to our broadcast engineer, uh, who I think our broadcast engineer is Robert McLean today, and Eric Kalander is our floor manager, and they're both awesome. Jay Fidel, of course, is super awesome. He's our executive producer who puts all these shows together so that you can be as informed as possible. If you want to be on my show and you have some really great topic, then um, send me an email. I'll see you every other Monday here at 3 for more of Out and About on Think Tech. Aloha, everyone. <laughs>